Welcome back to another video this is a part 5 of. What if Issei fell in love with Sona after Rias broke his heart? I don't really want to drag out the intro so let's get started. Chapter 17. Sona's Chance. A high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 17. Kyoto Spring Eve. Scene, Yasaka Castle. Waking from an oddly wonderful dream, Issei found himself feeling very weak, not to mention he was incredibly thirsty. To his astonishment, Issei felt very warm and comfortable. It was very hard to see anything as the teen was able to determine that there were most definitely boobs of some kind, blocking his vision. Looking up while making a hard and dry gulp, Issei was very pleased to see Sona's sleeping face. Without her glasses, the heiress was holding onto Issei's back with both of her arms as she had a leg wrapped around the teen's waist. Being able to back away just a bit, Sona's moderate and very exposed breasts were no longer invading his vision. Able to get a good look around, this room was alien to him. It wasn't his own room, nor was it Sona and Tsubaki's. Attempting to recollect his thoughts, Issei noticed that his environment was a traditional Japanese room. Not only that, but Issei found himself sharing a very comfy futon with Sona as the two were tucked in tightly. Then he remembered, that's right, I went all balance breaker and it knocked me out. Hee <laughs> hee, that was fun. Oh, wait, okay now, since we are here, this must be that fox queen's place. That means the little kiddo is alright and probably back with her mother. Wow, okay, good job, me. Now, I gotta get a fucking drink of water. Why am I so thirsty? I wonder if they got Gatorade or something around here. Deciding that he will do the best he can to get from his position without waking Sona, Issei begins to wriggle around and move two arms and a leg in order to free himself. Once he was able to work his way out from the tight embrace, the sea tree heiress then made a few mumbles before proceeding to wrap her leg around a fold of the futon while falling back into her deep sleep. Internally high-fiving himself, Issei slides the main rice paper door and makes his way into the halls. It must have been late at night as the hallways were brightened using oil lamps. Choosing to keep his presence hardly noticeable, Issei began to walk softly through the corridors. After a bit of wandering, Issei was sure he found what must be the kitchen. Finally, H2O. I am dying right now. Walking through the twin and arched doors, Issei jumped at the sudden surprise. Sitting next to a small wooden table was that kid, the little fox girl. She noticed him right away and stood up from her stool. Before Issei was able to say anything, the little blonde girl, wearing a little pink nightgown, ran from her spot and darted toward the startled teen. Now hugging one of his legs, the fox child, Kuno speaks up as she smiles brightly. Mommy's friend was right, you were just sleeping. I am so glad you are okay. Hello Red Knight, my name is Kuno, thank you for saving me. Issei had both of his arms held out from his sides as his body expression looked to be in a state of sudden shock. Then, before he could respond to Kuno, a voice was heard from across the kitchen. Era Era, slowly turning his head, Issei's eyes now looked as though they would bulge from their sockets. It was the queen herself, Yasaka of Kyoto. She happened to be wearing a midnight blue nightgown as she was stirring a pot of what smelled like hot cocoa over the wood stove. Her golden hair was pulled down but only enough so that it wasn't touching the floor. Like a dance, her nine tails of gold fluttered in a continuous and hypnotic motion. As she continues to stir the hot cocoa, her golden eyes are focused on little Kuno. Slowly, moving her gaze upward, Issei's eyes were finally locked onto hers. Good evening, Issei-kun, is it? Using her free arm, Yusaka gracefully waves her hand toward the direction of the small table that Kunua was sitting at previously. As it stands, my poor Kuno is unable to sleep, so I thought we could stay up for a bit and drink some hot chocolate together. I would very much enjoy it if you might join us, Issei-kun. Kuno releases Issei's leg and now tugs on his pants. Come on, Sir Issei. Mommy's chocolate is the best. Besides, I am sure you could use something in your belly, after beating up those mean girls. Relaxing his shoulders, Issei found himself calming down. Scratching the back of his head, Issei laughs nervously. Hee <laughs> hee, yeah, okay, hot chocolate sounds pretty good. Issei was now led happily by the little Kuno as she continued to tug on the teen's pant leg. As Yusaka was watching the two sit down at the table, she proceeded to reach above her for a third mug. 
The table itself could seat about four individuals as it was clearly meant for kitchen staff. Issei knew this much as he passed a very large dining hall on his way to the kitchen. Kuno sat down first while patting the spot next to her. Smiling, Issei compiled and sat beside Yusaka's child, now walking gracefully to the table, with a small tray of mugs filled with hot chocolate along with a few assortment of cookies, Yusaka now had her eyes completely trained on Issei. Once she was seated, on the other side of the very nervous team, she then handed off each individual's mug while showing a very gracious smile. Issei thanked the Fox Queen and immediately took a large sip. It was hot, it was sweet, it was really, really good. Smiling from the sudden warmth to his soul, Issei flinched the moment he caught Yusaka continuing to stare, almost relentlessly. Doing the best he could to not stare back, Issei simply looked around the room, then down at a smiling Kuno. How are you holding up, kiddo? Are you feeling okay after that whole thing? Kuno nods with enthusiasm as she sips her own mug of cocoa. Ehim, yeah, I'm okay now. Don't worry, those two knuckleheads didn't hurt me or anything. I am with my mommy now, thanks to you, Sir Issei-kun. Issei couldn't help himself, she was so adorable. Instinctively, the teen began to pat the little fox child on her head. Well, you are a very brave little Kuno. I am glad you are doing well. Issei took another large sip of his hot cocoa. Era era, Issei-kun, I don't believe we have been properly introduced. You can just call me Yusaka, no honorifics from you and I won't take no for an answer. Also, might I be so bold as to ask, well, are all young men of the current times, well, do they all have strong paternal instincts such as yourself? Yusaka was now taking a sip of her drink as one eye remained on Issei. Issei almost spit out his drink, but was able to stop himself at the last minute. Ehim, Erm, what? You just want me to call you, Yusaka? Aren't you royalty or something? I couldn't just. Issei was cut off the moment he felt one of Yusaka's tails begin to pat him gently on his back. Issei looks behind him, then back at Yusaka, who was staring at him with intensity. She had this half crescent shaped smile that complemented her other beautiful facial features. She then speaks softly, Issei kun, as I understand it, you are this generation Sekiryuti. The heavenly red dragon emperor of domination dwells within your very soul. Calling me royalty is quite cute really. So, if I were to go by your logic, then would you prefer me to call you something akin to, Emperor, Issei-kun? Issei shakes his head rapidly. No, of course not. You can call me anything you'd like. Besides, I am just Issei, nothing more, nothing less. Yasaka giggles at this. Very well. Then I am Yusaka, nothing more, nothing less. Before Issei could protest, Kunuo reached for the teen's blue t-shirt. Arguing, with mommy never works out. Believe me, I've tried. Issei does a double take at both Fox Yukai and simply relents. Alright, I suppose I can call you by your first name, if that's what you really want. Issei feels another soft padding from Yusaka's tail. After picking up and taking a small bite from one of the cookies, the Fox Queen spoke after another sip of her drink. Tell me, Issei-kun, do you have any children of your own? Feeling thankful that he didn't have a mouthful of his beverage to spit out at the moment, Issei's shock at the sudden question made him flinch. Er, ah, uh, no, Yusaka, I don't have any kids of my own. Yusaka nods in all seriousness. Then she shows a small yet very slight grin. I see. I see. Well then, may I ask if you are currently married? Issei finds himself being stared at by both Kuno and Yusaka at the same time. Both have anticipation gleaming from their eyes. Issei blinks a few times. No, I am not married. Issei now began to sport an embarrassing blush which accompanied his nervous smile perfectly. Yusaka looks down toward Kuno, then, in some silent pact, the two nod at one another. Issei noticed this and had no idea what was going on. Turning her head back to the team, Yusaka grew an intense smile. Well then, I see, that's good to know. Thinking about asking Yusaka why she was asking him all of these questions suddenly, Issei was cut off by a loud voice that sounded very familiar. Hiodo, what are you doing? Why did you just get out of bed like that? Oh, I am so sorry, good evening, Yusaka-sama. Sona was standing in the arched entryway. 
At first she looked rather frantic, but that changed the moment she saw who Issei was with. Sona had many questions running through her mind. Why was her boyfriend sitting next to the Yukai Queen like that? Why did she have one of her tails touching his back? No, impossible, it can't be what Sona is thinking. Yusaka is a nice ruler, she is known to be gentle and kind. So, that's all this has to be, right? Yusaka spoke in a quiet but polite tone. Ah, Seraphal San's sister, Sona, is it? Good evening to you, please, allow me to offer you a cup of hot chocolate. Issei was watching Sona's expression as he continued to feel that same tail of Yusaka's, still lightly patting his back. Sona was looking directly back at Issei. Her face didn't show it, as Sona was a master of stoicism, but her eyes did. Nervously, Issei stood up suddenly. Erm, P, President, I was just looking for a glass of water in. Then, Issei felt himself being forced back down as two more of Yusaka's tails wrapped around his arm and shoulder. These things were very soft and fluffy, but they were very strong too. Not fighting it, Issei sat back down. Yusaka then waved her hand at the open seat of the table. Sona-san, please, sit down. My daughter and I were already awake as she wasn't able to sleep. Issei happened to walk in and I invited him to join us. So, please, sit down. Sona looks toward Yusaka and shows a plastic smile while bowing slightly. Very well. Right after the statement, Sona's gaze turns back to Issei. Knowing he will probably get in an earful from the Citri heiress later, Issei simply smiles back as calmly as he can. Chapter 18, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 18, Heroic Actions, Heroic Deeds. Scene, Yusaka Castle, Issei continued to get the evil eye from Sona as she would glance from across the small table. The fact that Yusaka still had three of her nine tails on the teen's shoulder, neck and arm, well, let's just say that it didn't help matters for Issei. Sona's head tilted slightly toward Issei's left side and downward a few inches. It was Yusaka's daughter, who had a cookie in one of her hands while her other was holding onto Issei's shirt. She looked to be nibbling on her snack while giving Sona a particularly aggressive glare. Deciding to take a sip of her drink, which was prepared for her moments ago by the Fox Queen, Sona finds the flavor to be really, really, wait, no, no, this is just average, pfft, worse than that. She is up to something, I won't allow myself to enjoy anything she is offering. With another, obviously plastic, smile, Sona makes an equally fake, um, sound. This is quite wonderful, Yusaka-sama, thank you. Sona then puts the cup down and looks back toward Issei with a slightly angry smile this time. Well Hyodo, don't you think you've bothered Yusaka-san quite enough tonight? So how about you say, thank you, and get back to bed? Deciding that he didn't want to further upset Sona, Issei decided she was right. Besides, he probably has been wearing out his welcome, it's just that Yusaka and her daughter are too polite to say so. Pretending to smile while nodding in agreement, Issei spoke up. Oh, the president is absolutely correct. I am so sorry for bothering the two of you. Please excuse me. As Sona was nodding in agreement, Issei was attempting to stand up once again. However, just like last time, Yusaka did not release her tails from Issei's body, not to mention the teen found his shirt, still being tugged on by a now grumpy looking Kuno. Plopping back down in defeat, Issei looked extremely embarrassed while at the same time, nervous at how Sona would react. Kunuo made a scoffing sound as she now turned her agitated and golden eyes back toward a bewildered Sona. Yusaka then placed one of her arms over her mouth as she began to giggle softly. Fufufufu, era era, Sona-chan, don't be ridiculous. I quite enjoy having the savior of my little daughter, close and secure. Yusaka then closes her golden eyes while nodding to herself. A small blush appears in both of her cheeks shortly after. As Sona's jaw goes completely agape, Issei notices that the three fox tails began to slowly tighten around his arm and shoulders. Kuno picked up another cookie, then took a bit while continuing her glare at Sona. The little fox girl also adjusted her grip on Issei's shirt. Looking at the little fox princess, Sona began to show a small sneer of her own. Yusaka then spoke up once again. She did this while opening only one eye and directing it toward the Citri heiress. Tell me, Sona-chan, 
I assume that you are Isekun's master. Is that the correct term? I only know what I know about devils through Seraphal, therefore, my ignorance of the subject is quite extensive. Sona blushes at first, but then gets a hold of herself. Adjusting her glasses, Sona replies. Hyodo is not a part of my peerage, I am not his master. He belongs to the house of Grimori as it currently stands. Opening her other eye, Yusaka nods. I see. Very well. Perhaps then, if I may be so bold, can it be true? Are you in love with this boy? Issei flinches at this question which catches Yusaka's attention. She then smiles and turns her attention back toward Sona, while waiting for a reply. Sona jumps up from the chair while nervously pointing toward Issei. As she begins to uncontrollably heave in and out, the C3 heiress gives her reply in deep breaths. Issei, Hyodo, um, no, well, okay, maybe, erm, fine, yes. As her index finger continues to shake as it is still being pointed toward Issei, Yusaka then giggles a bit. Era era, Sona-chan, your sister is absolutely correct about you. Holy shit. Sona actually said she is in love with me, to another person. Wait, am I going to pay for this later? Issei was drawn out of his sudden thoughts when his eyes were being glared at by none other than a very flustered Sona Citri. Her gaze implied something, akin to, this is all your fault, Hyodo. Yasaka then clears her throat while looking deeply at Sona. Sona-chan, why was it that Issei-kun was knocked unconscious when your party arrived back with my daughter? Sona thought for a moment at Yusaka's new question, which took her attention away from her current and intense embarrassment. It was a really good question as it was the same question she was attempting to ask her own sister earlier that evening. Sona recalled having Tsubaki carry Issei on her back during the teleportation back to Yusaka castle. Remembering how the little fox princess was gripping onto one of Issei's pant legs the entire time, Sona thought it was nothing more than a bit of hero envy. Flashback the moment the peerage arrived back at Yusaka Castle. Blue Flash, a Seraphal, Sona, Tsubaki, with Issei slung over her shoulder, Saji, Momo, Ruruko, Tomo, Tsubasa and Rea step out of the large and slowly dissipating circle of blue energy, they are greeted with a very emotional Yusaka. She has her arms outstretched as Kuno finally lets go of Issei's leg and darts toward her mother. As the two embrace, Kunuo cries heavily as Yusaka weeps while keeping one of her sleeves over her face to hide the fact. Kunuo then sobs as words slowly make their way out of the little fox princess's mouth. Mommy, I love you. She then turns her head toward a slumped and knocked out Issei. He is still being held, with ease, by Tsubaki as he lays across her shoulder. Mommy, he saved me. After the girls and that other boy were not able to help, though they tried real hard. This red knight single-handedly put those mean girls in their place. But, mommy, something is wrong with him. Please help. Kuno now had her little index finger pointed toward Issei. Yasaka turns her attention toward this, red knight. Tilting her head a bit, she looked into the teen's sleeping face, very deeply. This caused the rest of the peerage to all have different looks of bewilderment. For some reason, Sona found herself standing closer to Tsubaki as her right arm instinctively was placed on Issei's shoulder as Yusaka continued her very interested stare. Then, the Fox Queen finally breaks her very intense gaze toward the sleeping boy and turns her attention toward a smiling Seraphal. You don't seem to be worried about this child, Seraphal. So, with that, might I assume that you already know about his condition? Yusaka's frown turned into a worried one as Seraphal continued to smile brightly. Don't you worry about it, Yusaka-san, Hyodo is a tough cookie. He just needs his rest and he'll be good as new. And Kunuo, I promise, he will be just fine in the morning, so how about you and your mother spend some quality time together while Sona and her gang get situated. After all, Golden Week has just begun. Seraphal then spinned around in a circle while finishing with a cute saluting pose. Kuno began to laugh while wiping her tears. Yasaka also began to smile as she nodded in understanding. Sona then tightened her grip on Issei's shoulder while her concerned look began to grow. Why do you push yourself so hard, Issei? And, that power of yours. I never knew yet I hardly know anything. Seraphal, you need to spill the beans. Flash back end. To be perfectly honest with you, Yasaka sama I really do not know. Aside from witnessing his full ability, from a distance mind you, 
Back during a skirmish involving Riser Phoenix, Sona takes a deep breath then turns her gaze back on Issei while adjusting her glasses. She no longer looks upset, rather now, she has a very concerned look, almost as if she is asking a question with her eyes. Well, today was the first time I got to experience your, well, your power, up close and personal. Then with astonishment in her eyes, she smiles ever so slightly. It was overwhelming. It almost felt like something my sister or Sirzex could do. But, it seems to have a price, that power of yours I mean. Sona's smile turns into a worried frown. I just don't want you to end up hurting yourself, it's. The sea tree heiress now closes her eyes, trying to hold back her emotions. Issei's face now shows a very warm smile. Slowly, he looks at both Yusaka and then little Kuno. Both blonde girls nod back at him with smiles of their own. Now standing from his position, Yusaka and Kuno both release Issei as he quietly walks toward Sona. Sona's eyes open the moment she feels a hand on her shoulder. Looking up, it was Issei, with, that, smile. I'll be okay, President. I don't plan on dying anytime soon. Issei-kun, are you intentionally trying to make my little Sotan cry? Boo, that's very mean, hehehehe. <laughs> Seraphal was now walking through the archways into the kitchen. She was rubbing her eyes while making her way toward the large fridge. She then pulled out a bottle of sake while rummaging around for a glass. And Sona, I told you not to worry about Issei, you need to relax. After all, everything went according to plan. Seraphal now sits at the table next to Sona while filling a very large glass full of cold sake. So, I see that you are all getting acquainted, how cute. Sona gains a tick mark as she looks toward her sister sitting beside her. You could have given us all much more detailed information on Hyodo, yet, as always, you like to leave things out. Seraphal looks at Issei, who still has a hand on her sister's shoulder, smiling and winking, the mouse spoke softly toward the team. It's your business, right Issei-kun? She then turns back toward Sona. Why didn't you simply ask him? You've had plenty of time to ask about his sacred gear. So, you see, you can't be mad at your Sarah-chan. Issei then spoke up before Sona could retaliate. Sona Erm, President, it's okay, you can ask me. I won't take it like you might think I will. You're different, you and your sister. So, yeah, ask away anytime. After a few more minutes of small talk, mainly about Seraphal and Yusaka's earlier days when they attended high school together, everyone eventually found themselves back in their own rooms for the rest of the night. Once Sona slid the rice paper door closed, she then looked toward Issei with a nervous smile. So, you should get into bed now. Also, close your eyes. Flinching at Sona's last words, Issei did what he was told. Once he crawled back into the futon, Issei closed his eyes while thinking to himself. Is she going to do what I think she is going to do? Feeling movement and shuffling under the covers, Issei then felt two hands on his face. Shortly after, Issei then felt warm and soft skin covering his face. Opening his eyes, sure enough, he was once again in between Sona's moderate yet very comfy cleavage. After a few moments of both teens adjusting themselves to get comfortable, Issei was able to feel more skin underneath the sheets. Realizing now that Sona must have thrown off her nightgown, this meant that the sea tree heiress was almost completely naked. Oh how Issei wanted to get a peek of what color her panties must be. Purple with black lace, maybe she is an animal lover and her panties have little cartoon cats printed on them. Oh that would be cute, considering how serious Sona is all of the time. Well, it was a good idea not to try and find out, though, tomorrow was a whole other day. Issei then heard Sona speak very softly. Good night, Issei-kun. Chapter 19, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 19, and I said what about, breakfast at Yusaka's. Scene, Yusaka Castle, good morning, sleepy erm, baka head. Issei woke to the feeling of Sona's tight embrace. Looking up, the teen was greeted by Sona's purple eyes. They had an awkwardly flustered look to them as Sona's face meanwhile looked very blushy under her barely hidden smile. Still half asleep, Issei blinks a few times as a smile begins to creep along his face. Issei was very happy about two things and hopefully, a third thing. The first two were already happening at the moment. 
These were Sona's very cute Tsunere tendencies which in itself was a morning treat for the team. Meanwhile there was the fact that Issei's chin was firmly packed in between Sona's moderate breasts. Now, if his luck would continue, there was that matter regarding Sona's panties. What style, color or design could they be? Issei was hoping that there was a pantheon, he didn't care which that would grant his perverted desire. His thoughts were cut off the moment Sona got over her flustering and calmed her glasses free eyes. Hyodo, mind telling me about the Fox Queen? Hmm, she looked very interested in you all of a sudden. Also, you didn't seem to mind that older woman's advances, in fact, dare I say, you rather enjoyed them, isn't that right? Sona's expression turned into her usual stoic one, however her grip around Issei didn't loosen, if anything, it tightened. Feeling on the spot, Issei lowers his head a bit, as to dodge Sona's piercing eyes. Realizing that he is now staring at Sona's cleavage instead, this wasn't the best of choices the teen thought. Regardless, he was there and thought he could make this actually work in his defense. In Issei's mind, Dedreg spoke up. A.H., yes, partner, you are finally using that head of yours, the one on top of your shoulders I mean. Yes, a woman such as Sona would be quite jealous if she had to contend with someone as, let's just say, Kirby, so, someone as Kirby as Yasaka. With that partner, your new girlfriend needs assurance that you find her just as attractive. Be smart about this. Hey, Sona, would it be alright if I stayed here for a little longer? Issei now closed his eyes preparing for one of two outcomes. The first would be some sort of Tsunere style beating. The second would be, drawn out of his thoughts, Issei found himself being pushed into Sona's chest with such vigor that he thought his eyes would bulge from their sockets. That was indeed smart, partner. The drag was indeed proud of his partner and more so, the dragon was imagining a day where his name would no longer be associated with the words, boobs, breasts or grabbing. Oh, the day couldn't come sooner, thought the weary dragon. After about 20 minutes of silent cuddling, Sona and Issei were startled at the sound of someone knocking against their door. Then a young girl's voice could be heard. Issei-kun, are you in there? Mommy told me to come and fetch you for breakfast. She made waffles. The little fox girl then began to relentlessly knock over and over. Sona's face contorted into one of annoyance and slight anger, meanwhile Issei's smile remained as he wanted to laugh at the situation. She's a good kid, I am really glad nothing bad happened to her. Speaking of, I wonder what happened to those troublemakers. Drawn out of his thoughts again, Issei watched as Sona reached for one of her slippers as she looked as though she would throw it. Reaching for her arm, Issei pulled himself up a bit. Replying to the continuous knocking, Issei spoke up in a loud voice. Yeah, okay kiddo, I'm awake. Just give us, erm just give me 5 minutes, alright. Meanwhile Sona was trying to remove Issei's hand as she was purely intent on teaching that little brat a bit of respect. Okay, Issei-kun, I'll be waiting. 5 minutes and not a second longer. Oh and tell that mean looking short girl that. She can eat too, I suppose. Issei wanted to burst out laughing, however once his eyes went back toward Sona's, she looked absolutely livid. Finally, letting go of her hand, Issei found their situation a bit more awkward. As the two were shuffling about in the futon earlier, the sheets were now drawn back. Issei couldn't help himself and proceeded to look down. Don't do it partner, no. The drag now cringed the moment Issei received Sona's slipper across the top of his head. Plam. As Issei flies onto his back, his nose bursts with blood. Dedrag, it was worth it, I can die a happy man, they were purple, like I thought they'd be, with black lace and they had blue snowflakes on them. Oh dear Satan, please never allow this image to fade from my memory. Issei, partner, you baka. Dedrag began to lose all hope in removing the breast title from his name. Sona realized what she did the moment Issei looked to be laying on his back and in an unresponsive state. Did she go too far this time? Looking down at the teen as his eyes were rolled into the back of his head, the Citri heiress began to shake Issei. Issei, oh shit, Issei, I'm sorry, please wake up. Opening one eye, Issei shows a small grin. Well, if that's an order, I suppose I'll wake up. Before Sona could react, Issei reached and quickly kissed the Citri heiress on her forehead before rising from the bed and walking toward the closet to put on a pair of house slippers. We probably should get down there, 
After all, it's rude to keep the master of the house waiting. And to answer your question from earlier, Sona continued to stare at Issei with shocked eyes. Issei continued as he shut the closet door. I really like you, Sona. You have been nothing but supportive since day one of this whole, Rias, thing. So, yeah, I am pretty weak when it comes to girls and I know I do stupid things. But, ever since I met you, no, ever since I got to know you, well, I don't know how to put words to it. If I were to say that you balance me, would that make any sense to you? Sona nods and then shakes her head, not quite knowing what to do as she was completely gobsmacked at Issei's words. Reaching for her glasses she then places them over her eyes. I guess what I am really trying to say is that you, somehow, have been able to curb my outbursts. I thought it was probably how strict you were with your peerage at first, but that's not it. After thinking about it for some time, I think it's the fact that you were here, when I needed someone, even when I thought I'd be alone, when nobody else wanted me, you were here. Sniff sniff cripes, I sound like a jackass right now. Issei's eyes looked to water up a bit as he lowered his head to purposely allow his bangs to cover his face. Sona immediately stood from the futon, still mostly naked, and darted toward a hunched over Issei. Instantly, Issei felt arms around his stomach as the Citri heiress was hugging the teen's back with great ferocity. It's okay, Issei, it's okay. Still in the same position, Issei replied. No, it's not, but it will be. At least I can say this much. This past night has been the most peaceful I think I've been in a very long time. No nightmares this time, Sona had her head pushed into Issei's shirt. Issei shook his head, well, at first yeah, it started off like it usually does. It was when, you know who, was doing you know what. But something happened, I know this will sound pretty dumb, but something saved me. I am pretty sure it was a giant yellow fluffy thing. I didn't get a good look at it or maybe I am forgetting the dream already, but it killed that, erm. Issei shook for a moment, but then managed to continue. It shot this blue fire at her and she screamed in agony. To be honest, that part felt really, really good, but then the park, the fountain, all of that warped into this garden. It was beautiful, Sona. Issei was now looking up at the ceiling as he reminisced. A few tears stray their way from his eyes. I remember laying in a field of grass, it was dark and there were stars everywhere. And it just stayed like that, almost as if I was sleeping within a dream, if that makes any sense. Sona nods while her face remains against Issei's back. That sounds like a very wonderful dream, Issei. I believe you are coming to terms with what, you know who, did to you by talking about it. Issei nods himself. Yeah, probably. Scene 5 minutes later, dining room. Era era. Good morning, Issei-kun. Yasaka was waving with one arm toward the teen as he walked into the dining room with Sona. All of the peerage members were already seated along with a groggy-looking Seraphal, who was still rubbing the sleep from her blue eyes. Sitting on one side next to Yasaka was little Kuno, who happened to be waving both of her arms out frantically with stars in her little golden eyes as she stared toward her savior. Hey, took you long enough. There's an open seat next to mommy. She kept it clear just for you. Kuno was proudly stating this while now pointing toward the vacant chair next to her mother. Yasaka immediately places a sleeve over her mouth as she begins to laugh. Fufufufu, era era, come now Kuno, you are embarrassing your old mother. But that's what you told me earlier. Instantly, one of Yasaka's tails whipped itself around her daughter's mouth as it stopped her from continuing on. At the same time, the fox queen began to blush. Era era, you hush now, little one. Issei looked toward Sona and shrugged. Meanwhile the heiress turns her attention to the only other open chair within the dining room. Of course, it had to be next to her older sister. Sona began to form another tick mark, that was until Issei walked over and pulled the heiress's chair out for her. Seraphal's jaw dropped at this sudden action. Similar reactions were present and accounted for when it came to the rest of Sona's peerage members. Issei simply stood and smiled while looking at Sona. President, would you like to sit down? Issei then pulled the chair a few more inches from the table. Seeing this, the flustered Sona chose to comply with the teen's request and proceeded to sit down. Issei then softly pushed the chair inward toward the table. Afterwards, Issei silently walked toward the chair next to Yusaka. He then made a small bow and proceeded to sit down. 
As both Yasaka and Kuno looked to be in certain states of their own forms of shock, Seraphal decided she couldn't take it anymore. Issei, you never told me that you were an A-plus gentleman. Oh golly, imagine him wearing a suit and tie, right, Satan. Seraphal had two pink heart shapes protruding from her blue eyes. Sona made no comment, rather, she simply nodded while attempting to maintain a look that didn't suggest absolute and overwhelming urges that the heiress very much would like to act on. Yasaka then began to start serving everyone's breakfast with a nervous smile. As promised by Kuno, breakfast was indeed waffles. Fresh fruit of almost every kind adorned the entire table along with bottles of honey and syrup not to mention, jams and butters as well. As everyone began to eat, Seraphal, with a mouth stuffed full of food, remembered something. Osh, Isahe, a bit of waffle came flying out of the Mao's mouth. She then took a drink of her glass of milk and then continued. Sorry, Erm, Ise kun Sirzex sent me this last night, I completely forgot about it. Seraphal then pulled a small envelope from her cleavage, which made Sona cringe and proceeded to use magic to float it over toward Ise. One receiving it, Ise put down his fork and proceeded to open the seal. It was a devil's contract form. It has the teen's name as well as an address written on it. Getting glances from all ends of the table, Issei thought it rather rude not to share. Well, it's a devil's contract. I guess I can still get them, even when I'm not in Kuo. Well, it looks like I am being summoned tonight at sunset. Oh, it's at some hotel around here in Kyoto. I wonder what the client could want from me. I've never gotten a contract that was labeled directly for me. Sona looks toward Seraphal. Oh come on, he isn't obligated to do those right now. Seraphal shakes her index finger at Sona. Sirzex said that Issei can either do it or not, it's up to him. Though, Sirzex had a message for me to give you, Issei. Turning her head, Seraphal looks back at Issei. He said that doing contracts will help you rise the ranks. He also said that if it were him in your place, he would feel just as you do right now. Issei nods at this while looking back at his contract. Yeah, it's fine, I want to do it. After all, if Sona has taught me anything it's that I need to put in the work if I want the desired outcome. So yeah, it's cool, another successful contract is one step above where I currently am. Sona blushes deeply at Issei's proclamation. Issei, you cute baka head. Chapter 20, Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 20, Mother Figure. Scene, Kuo Academy. As we can hear what seems to be splashing sounds, we focus toward the main level girls' bathrooms. Inside one of the stalls, we can see Rias, wearing her olive green jumpsuit, as she is relentlessly plunging a blockage out from the toilet. She looks to be perspiring quite a lot as sweat drops continue to fall from the wet forehead of the crimson-haired Switch Princess. Rias stops her plunging the moment she hears a deep and unearthly whisper, coming from behind her. Rias. Oh, Rias. Jumping from her position and looking behind her with absolute fright in her blue eyes, Rias found, to her utter surprise, that nothing was there. Walking out of the stall, while holding her plunger as if it were a brandished weapon, Rias takes a quick glance to her left and then to her right. Indeed, the bathroom was empty. Was Rias just hearing things? It's absolutely possible considering the past and recent events. Yeah, that's it. She was just having some kind of internal fit, that's what Rias was thinking as she took a deep breath. Jumping all of the sudden, Rias heard each and every sink faucet begin to spray water while each and everything toilet was flushed at the same time. Deciding that she was not having a panic attack, Rias darted from the bathroom while screaming. Brafia, help me, eat. Scene, Yasaka Castle. As everyone was drinking their respective drinks, which were either coffee, tea or milk, the table was silent. Sona was still blushing from Issei's incredible compliment, however she was able to maintain her stoicism to an efficiency of about 80%. Meanwhile, Yasaka and Kuno continued to give each other questionable glances. It looked as though Kuno was trying to silently get her mother to do something with a mixture of eyebrow and lip movements. Meanwhile, Yasaka would simply smile nervously and shake her head. As this continued on, Seraphal was staring, dreamily at a nervously smiling Issei as he was drinking his coffee. Seraphal then turns her gaze toward her childhood friend. Seeing the strange and obvious dynamics between Yusaka and her little daughter and more so, 
knowing what kind of person Yasaka was, the Mao began to smirk. Now turning her attention back onto Issei, she noticed he looked to be in a better state of mind. His determination regarding his random contract was proof enough of that. Did Sona and him? No, not possible. Wait, of course. Yasaka is a fox yukai. Kitsune are known for their spiritual powers. Did she pick up on Issei's trauma? Seraphal then takes another sip of her glass of milk before speaking up while smiling vigorously toward Issei. So, how have those nightmares been treating you, Issei-kun? Spitting his mouthful of hot coffee back into his mug, Issei coughs for a moment. After clearing his throat, he looks back at Seraphal with a look of pure shock and confusion. Well, um, to be honest, last night, it wasn't so bad, rather, it was a really good dream. Wait, how do you know about that? Before Sona could speak up, Seraphal interrupts. Issei, 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 come now, you are talking to your Milky Chan, of course I know. Besides, that's not important right now. What is important is the fact that you had a good night's sleep. Seraphal then turns her toward a very aware and nervous looking Yusaka. The Mao then winks at the Fox Queen with a smirk. It's good Issei got a good night's sleep. Isn't that right, Yusaka-chan? Sona's nervousness turned instantly into pure suspicion. She was now studying at the very flustered-looking and giggling Yusaka of Kyoto. The queen now had a sleeve over her mouth as she continued to nervously laugh. Sona knew something was up and she didn't like it, not one bit. The sea tree heiress caught her eyes wandering downward and focusing on Yusaka's massive mammaries. Instantly, this made Sona even angrier. Issei was very curious as to Seraphal's comment toward Yusaka. Why would she say something like that? Issei then turned his attention to a very grumpy-looking Sona. She looked to be grinding her teeth as she was staring intensely toward Yusaka's open chest. Steam would blow from each of Sona's ears if that were possible. Then, as if on cue, Yusaka notices Sona's stare as begins to smirk a bit. Still, with her hand over her mouth, Yusaka proceeds to use a few of her tails to slowly pull Issei's chair closer to her. Issei is unable to notice this however Sona does. She wants to stand up and point at this cougar for attempting to use her mature assets as a means to steal her boyfriend. However she took a moment to think deeply. Firstly, Yusaka was her sister's friend. Secondly, Sona knew she was no match against someone as powerful as this nine tail. Lastly, Sona was not going to start some war between the Yukai and Devil factions because of her own internal struggles with how she perceives her own body. No, Sona was better than this. She was going to remain an example for her peerage and maintain her strict image. At least until she was able to get some alone time with that old bitch. Shaking her head clear of these thoughts, Sona chose to look at Issei's contract again. Hiyodo, let me see your pamphlet. Sona reached over the table. Smiling, Issei folded his contract into a paper airplane and tossed it toward the sea tree heiress. Catching it, Sona rolled her eyes at the immaturity of the act. Though, it was very, Issei, to do something like that. So, Sona thought it was a rather cute gesture. Unfolding it, Sona began to scrupulously scan the contract as Subaki joined in. Watching the two girls from across the table, Issei found Sona's determination, when it came to things like this, extremely adorable. Seeing that calculating look in her eyes now, then remembering how warm she felt in the futon last night. Issei was drawn from his thoughts when he could feel a warm breath next to his ear. Turning suddenly, Issei was greeted by a pair of golden eyes. Yasaka was looking directly at him, only inches from his face. At this range, Issei couldn't help but melt like putty. She was so beautiful along with her crescent shaped smile the woman looked like she wanted to say something then issei heard her speak however her lips did not move calm yourself little one all is well era era relax don't make a scene now issei now very physically flustered attempts to reach for didrag didrag partner are you hearing this do as the nine tail tells you partner she has no malicious intent Era Era, why hello Red Dragon Coon. Yes, Issei, I am not going to hurt you. Issei continues to stare deeply into Yusaka's eyes. Alright then, what's up, Yusaka-san? I know that we've just met, but would it be possible to ask you a few questions, out of the earshot of others? Issei physically nods. 
Thank you, Issei. My first question involves what I've seen inside of your very soul. It was something that I was able to notice the moment you brought my kuno back to me. Issei, who is Rainer and why does she hurt you so? After a moment, Issei thinks about it and decides that Yusaka is one of Seraphal's good friends, not to mention Dedrag told him to trust her. So, inwardly, Issei tells Yusaka everything. He goes into as much detail as he remembers. So much so that he brings up a subject that surprises even himself, as he never thought about it before until now. When I woke up, after being turned into a devil, I was alone. Nobody knew what I was talking about when I brought up my past date with Yuma. I didn't know what was happening to me. I was sensitive to daylight and my night vision improved. My reflexes and body strength increased. But again, nobody explained anything to me. So, for the whole day, damn it, why did she do that? Issei could feel this overwhelming warmth that made his entire body tingle. This strange feeling gave him clarity and allowed him to continue without emotionally breaking down. So I was alone. That was until another one of those black-winged bastards showed up. Again, more pain from those stupid light spears. It was as if I was in my own version of hell. Only then, did Rias show up, with that dumb smile on her face. Acting all heroic and shit. Why did I just realize that fact? Was I somehow holding it back? Calm yourself little one, it's alright, shish. Sona and Tsubaki stop with their scrutinizing of Issei's contract and look toward his direction at the table. Everyone, aside from Seraphal, had their jaws agape. Yusaka was now embracing the sobbing mess that was Issei Hiyodo. Issei wasn't able to notice the entire room staring in his direction as his face was enveloped by the things that Sona feared the worst. Issei, on his part, has his arms wrapped tightly around Yusaka's waist as the two hunch from each of their chairs. The Fox Queen had both of her long-sleeved arms, wrapped around the teen's neck. What prevented Sona from screaming that very moment was the fact that Yusaka was also crying along with a weeping Issei. What in all of the seven hells was going on? Seraphal then stood up while smiling. Well, it looks like my Yusaka-chan is helping our Issei-kun, Satan. So, while she does her work, how about the rest of us clean up the dishes and prepare for an afternoon outing? Personally. I want to check out the gift stores while we are here. Not to mention the street food. Sona looks back and up at her older sister with a very confused gaze. Wait, you planned this. Also, what do you mean by Yusaka helping Issei? What does that even mean? Seraphal throws her index finger into the air as her bubbly demeanor remains the same. Sona, I love how concerned you are for Issei. Maybe now would be a good time. Sona blushes even more intensely as her entire peerage is looking toward her with perplexed faces. Flustered, Sona blurts out a few words. Shut up, Seraphal, I don't. Have the foggiest of what you are trying to imply. The Mao makes a childish yet sarcastic surprised expression. Oh, boo, so tan, you aren't ready after all. Oh well, you are still a growing girl I suppose. Sona points toward her older sister as her eyebrow raises. Quiet. You, as Sona continued to inwardly protest, while watching the interaction between the crying couple, the entire peerage, including Seraphal and Kuno, all clear the table and make their ways into the kitchen. Issei wasn't aware of any of this as he continued to sob. The two were now alone. Scene, kitchen. Seraphal, you'd better explain yourself, right now. Sona had both of her arms folded as her body language suggested sheer anger. Seraphal then changed her facial expression to that of someone who was very serious. She then placed both of her arms to her waist and proceeded to scowl back at her younger sister. Sona, listen to me very carefully. Seeing this reaction, Sona looked to retract just a bit. All right, I'm listening. You told me about Issei's dreams. Interestingly enough, it happened at the point where I was already going to volunteer your peerage for this mission. However, after you told me, I then remembered what my childhood friend is capable of. Sona, Issei loves you, I promise you that. He loves both of us. Seraphal now relaxes her body a bit while softening her stern look. So, stop getting jealous. Yusaka has the best of intentions for our Issei. Aside from Tsubaki, the entire peerage gasps. Sona turned her nervous head from Seraphal to now each and every member, as they look back with widened eyes. Shit. No getting out of this now. 
Seraphal then sarcastically places a hand over her own mouth. Oopsies. Sona then facepalms as Tsubaki places a hand on her king's shoulder in support. Looking back up at Tsubaki, she nods with a small smile. Nodding back at her queen, Sona takes a deep breath. All right, fine, you heard right. Hyodo, Erm, Issei, is my boyfriend. Sona now looks incredibly embarrassed. Oh, me too, me too. I'm also Issei, Kun's girlfriend. Seraphal was now jumping into the air with a very deep and warm smile. Sona facepalms again. Scene, dining room. Issei then got a hold of himself and came to his senses. Realizing where he was, rather, where his face was, the teen immediately backed away while almost falling off of his own chair. Looking back at Yasaka's confused expression, Issei spoke out nervously. Oh no, I am so sorry, Yasaka-sama. I didn't mean to. As the teen wanted to continue his apology, Issei once again found his face being smothered by Yasaka's very large assets. MPPPHHHHFFFF. Holding Issei's head to her chest with both of her arms, the Fox Queen spoke as she was looking down at the teen's warm and brown hair. Era era, no need to be shy now. I thought we talked about formalities and honorifics earlier. So, stop pretending that this bothers you and just rest. After all, you can think of this as a form of medicine for your ailments. Issei's arms stop flying wildly and relax at his sides. After another 15 minutes or so, Yusaka slowly releases the team. She then looks at his blushing smile. See, that wasn't so bad now, was it? You'd be surprised what a simple hug can do for one's soul. After all, I can see yours. And just as your sweet face implies, along with your physical body, you now feel entirely at peace. Consider this act as a form of my adoration towards you, Issei. Issei then scratches the back of his head nervously. Still smiling, Issei replies. You really are a nice person, Yusaka. It's really awesome that I got to meet someone as kind as you. To be honest, when we were drinking hot cocoa last night, I don't know, it just made me feel like a kid again, ha ha ha. Now patting Issei's head with her hand, Yusaka replies while smiling brightly. Era, Issei, are you trying to imply that you are getting mommy vibes from me? Oh, you are, I see. What's this I hear from deep within? I may not have the pronunciation correct but I think you're inwardly calling me a, dami mommy. Do I have this correct, Issei-kun? Flinching at this, Issei replied instantly while shaking his head in either direction. No, no, that's not true, no, nah, uh, no way. Yasaka closes one eye while keeping the other focused on Issei's own two eyes. She then visibly grins, which further startles the teen. Era era, Issei-kun, you are most definitely lying to me. You know, my daughter knows better than to lie to me. Perhaps you will need a correction later, era era. Issei stood from his chair the moment Yasaka did. She then winks toward the teen as she gracefully leaves the room. Before closing the door behind her, Yusaka looks back at Issei, who is just standing nervously with a mixture of paranoia and delight. Issei, you have my attention. Keep that in mind. Well that's all for now see you in the next part.